I know I've made this video a few times already, and you guys have probably seen it everywhere. Char Schwab is packing up, they're leaving San Francisco, but it's something a lot more than this because Char Schwab isn't like your hole in the wall business, right? This isn't a mom and pop store. Char Schwab is a multi billion dollar industry. They're probably the biggest brokerage firm in the United States and possibly in the, in the entire world, in fact. They're huge, they make several investments, and now, these guys have finally started shedding their office space, not just in San Francisco, but also in several cities around the country. We're seeing places in Seattle, Chicago, New York City, Austin. It's not just Charles Schwab. Several other banking institutions are doing the same thing. Everyone thought, oh, it's banking. Everyone has to go to the office for banking, right? And at first, everyone was like, okay, cool. Tech could go online, that's fine. But now with the banks and brokerages going online and these guys are cutting back on office space because they're starting to see how much money they can save and how much money they can make by doing no office. Yeah, Char Schwab, they're licking their lips right now and they're rubbing their hands. They like this a lot. And this is gonna be absolutely detrimental to San Francisco. In fact, of all of the first world cities around the world, from Shanghai to Dubai, we're seeing San Francisco by far having the worst track record in the commercial real estate field. And with the banks now leaving San Francisco, it's not just Schwab guys, Wells Fargo's doing the same thing, JP Morgan's doing the same thing, Goldman is doing the same thing, small VC firms, hedge funds are all leaving. And partly the reason why is because there's just nothing there in the city anymore. There really isn't anything in the city. I mean, unless you like people smoking fentanyl right outside of your $1 million condo, then San Francisco is definitely the place for you. So Charles Schwab is leaving everywhere, right? Schwab is already telling thousands of staffers in five different cities to work from home. And it's gonna be retiring its old San Francisco headquarters. And it's big, because if you look at San Francisco, it's a major player in terms of banking. You have so many tech companies so many venture capitalists. You have billions of dollars being funded and raised every single year. Obviously, banks play a major role in that. But now with tech moving online and tech going to other places, a lot of banks feel like the role in the big Bay Area has been reduced. Because first of all, most of the startups are no longer coming to San Francisco, right? You could make a startup literally in your computer. You could have 10, 20, 30 employees all on Slack or Zoom, and you're fine. In fact, Schwab has estimated they could save 500 million whopping dollars every single year by closing down their stores. And not to mention, by closing down these commercial office buildings, they're not losing any money. In fact, they're gaining $500 million because that's how much they're spending on these buildings. I mean, I don't really blame Schwab. I mean, one of the big reasons why so many people just suddenly wanted to go online is because if you go to San Francisco, it looks like this 24 seven. Like seriously, this is what San Francisco looks like do you really want to live here, right? Imagine like being a landlord of this building. Your property value just became zero. There's no renters and it looks like this on a constant basis. And by the way, this is Market Street. If you go just like a couple blocks down, you got like the Twitter headquarters, you got the Uber headquarters, you got the Lyft headquarters, you got the Reddit headquarters, and even those headquarters are shrinking by the day. And this scenario here isn't just restricted to one street. In fact, and this is very common in the Tenderloin district, but now it's being pushed out to the Civic Center, it's going to Knob Hill, you're seeing this scene in the Mission district, you're seeing this shoplifting, you're seeing robberies everywhere. There's even clips of this woman stealing like a designer purse. She got caught and then they just let her go. That's insane to me. You would not see this to any city. This is why so many people who used to like San Francisco, I like San Francisco as well. I don't like it anymore. People don't like it anymore because of scenes like this. How can you expect people to pay $3,000 for a studio when it looks like this, right? Property values are in the doo-doo. Nobody wants to be here. I mean, it's just getting worse and worse by the day for San Francisco. I mean, look at this, right? People are just high shooting at fentanyl, and this is supposed to be like a high-end shopping district. But now, look at all of these luxury storefronts. These storefronts are all closed, right? Imagine walking through the sidewalk, chilling, and you see scenes like these. A lot of these people need mental health. They need public housing, but the city just can't offer it. And plus, the city's going broke anyway. The city really doesn't have any more money to do things. And when you're just walking, you just suddenly see like an all out brawl for basically no reason. It's an absolutely crazy neighborhood, man. I mean, 
this is crazier than like movies. This is probably worse than movies, in fact. And this is real life. This isn't fiction. Even Wells Fargo is done. Wells Fargo finally lands a buyer for the San Francisco office building, says you could have this building for a massive loss. In fact, Wells Fargo has lost 60% in the investment of this building. And what's crazy is they bought this building back in 05. And 2005, property prices were super low compared to now. But for some reason, you could actually lose money despite buying this back in 2005. If you bought a commercial office building basically anywhere from Shanghai, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Sydney, Melbourne at 2005 and you sell it today, you're making a fat profit. I mean, you're probably making it like three, four, five folds, right? You're going to be making a ton of cash, but only San Francisco where you could have almost two decades of appreciation and then you sell it for 60% off and you lost a bunch of money. That's crazy, right? And by the way, you know, money back in 2005 was worth so much more than now. Now we've got this crazy inflation going on. So obviously Wells Fargo is pretty mad about the situation. They lost so much money in this building, not to mention the property prices, property taxes, HOA maintenance in San Francisco buildings are so high. So they lost more than 60%. They lost tens of millions of dollars by having this building. And people around this building are really scared because this isn't like a bad location, guys. This isn't the trenches. This is a good part of town. And people start noticing, oh crap, you know, Wells Fargo lost so much money on this building. This is pretty scary. And then people are like, oh crap, Charles Schwab is leaving in massive droves. And they're like, oh man, JP Morgan's leaving too. And these and my VC firm right next door just closed their office. People are panicking in the San Francisco real estate department and for good reason. And plus, don't expect anyone to come in, right? If San Francisco suddenly got an inflow of 150,000 office workers coming to commute to San Francisco every single day, I guarantee you property prices will go through the roof. Even San Francisco's apartment complex, NEMA, which is right next to the XHQ or AKA Twitter, could default on their mortgage. And that's like a multi-story skyscraper. It's decked out with blue glass. It looks great. And NEMA may actually go to the foreclosure route because they know the property value of its skyscraper is basically worthless. They can't rent out any of the rooms and they can't even pay the basic things like taxes and maintenance and staff workers. And also the loan is $400 million and if default hat, it's gonna cause another massive ripple effect. San Francisco basically looks like this every single day. And if you guys wanna know what NEMA looks like, this is basically around the same area as that luxury skyscraper and the Twitter headquarters. It looks like this. I, I can't imagine paying like $2,500 or $2,900 for like a 400 square feet studio living in a place like this. This is like every single day in San Francisco. It's only getting worse. And what's even scarier is the city really isn't addressing any issues. You're seeing a lot of issues in homelessness, people doing drugs, open air drug markets. The city just doesn't address these issues. They keep ignoring these issues, which is basically making a lot of people just like, we're not even gonna fight it, we're just gonna leave, right? Skills left for Las Vegas, they rented like a 75,000 square feet office there. They straight up left San Francisco, they don't wanna be here anymore. It's a great city, fantastic location. It really is a fantastic location. But right now, if they don't change their ways, it might be too late for San Francisco.